All right, what are we on? We're moving the economy. Let's go to the economy. Hey, good news for those of us who support Bidenomics. Homelessness in U.S. surges to highest recorded level. Amazing. And this uh, is where Democrats sorry. are out saying Biden just needs to flaunt the economy. It's just messaging. It's just, yeah, it's yeah, messaging. It's all just tell people they're doing better. He needs to tell them how good they're doing. He needs to convince them that the GDP matters and the stock market matters and not the price of their rent, not the price of food, not the price of their housing. None of that stuff matters because the economy is doing good. And because of that, you're going to have your job. And that's that's kind of important. But yeah. people hate their jobs and they're like not jobs. They hate, their three, jo- they, they hate their three jobs that can barely help them <laughs> right. afford rent or food. Um, so, yeah, the uh, this is the thing. Young adults, millennials and Gen Zers are pulling in bigger paychecks, but much of their spending power is fueling short term purchases like groceries and vacation, not savings. Food and not savings. Are you what Gen Z and millennials? what are you thinking? Save it's, your money. Don't eat. Yeah, don't eat. Why are you? Even, why are you even eating breakfast? The guy. The, oh God, who was it? He was just fired from his job. I think at the Washington Post, <clears throat> and uh, he was one of the ones who's like, to save money, try skipping breakfast. Um, you know, whenever they frame something like that, the paychecks might be getting bigger, but it doesn't matter what that raw number is if the purchasing power is smaller. Like. And they leave that out. You can say, hey, he makes $120,000 a year, but he lives in a place where rent for a one bedroom is $5,000 a month. So like that does not add up to what we have always been told you're supposed to make in order to yeah. afford life. So when when you we have a president fighting for shrinkflation in the face of the like you could fix its shrinkflation entirely, hypothetically, right? He just fixes it. And he actually right. literally has the power. FDR froze prices before. You could, he can, without the act, without even Congress being pulled into this, he could freeze prices on things, right? But nothing he could ever do there is going to impact housing costs being exponentially more, rising exponentially more than your wages are. It's it's too big of a check paycheck. It's too big of a a burden, a cost on on work the working class to ever make up for with all these other things. Yeah. So you're no never matter how good the economy is doing, if you're paying twenty percent more in rent than you did last year, you're never going to make that up in any other area. You're fucked because it's too much of your money. One hundred percent, and that's why you know when you go back to see how Obama dealt with the crisis, the housing crisis and the, uh, you know, the, the bubble, the, the bubble burst, the economy in 2008 and nine and 10, and you see how many people lost houses, especially in black communities. And that has not been recaptured. I know that's a really big one. And also it's like so faint, you can barely see it, but that line on the bottom that goes down to negative 1.4 over the last, four years. So it's not even, I mean, you know, that's uh, cumulative growth in real net worth by race and ethnicity. And at the very bottom there is black Americans. The green line is Hispanic Americans. And the top is white Americans. Of course, that's shocking. Um, You know, and that there are so many regulatory issues that Congress could be taking up. And instead, you know, that's why I think a lot of people don't understand why I don't care about Trump and his indictments. I mean, like I do, I think, you know, great, but he should be in jail. Pelosi should be in jail, put them all in jail. But like if Democrats, one tactic is focusing only on preventing Trump, they don't give a shit about Nikki Haley. She's one of the good ones. Oh, Liz Cheney, maybe. What did Robert Reich say? She should, he's a Democrat. Like, who are these people? There are actual material issues that must be addressed and they don't change whether it's Trump or Biden or Obama or George W. Bush, who, by the way, presided over the presidency the last time we had a federal minimum wage raise, George W. Bush. So like, 
focus. Yeah, yeah. If, Demo if Democrats weren't allowed to run on Trump bad and Russiagate and all that bullshit, they would have to run on substantially changing people's lives and, and lifting up the middle class and poor. They would have to run on, hey, you, uh, you know, during the pandemic, it was a good excuse to uh, lift child, raise child poverty rates or low, lift children out of poverty rates, right. uh, allegedly cut child poverty in half, and then you just let it fucking expire. So they would have to run on extending that, you know, but, but they have this issue that can, they can put to the public that is acceptable enough to enough liberals and shit libs and centrists that this other guy is so bad that he's such a threat that it doesn't matter what we fucking say over here. He's going to be worse on all these things and everything. And we it's know, working, like we working we say out every just week, like we just like we structured it. <laughs> we say every week, you know, FDR he won over people by offering something to the public, bribe the public with fucking making their rent less, making housing affordable, preventing um, Blackstone and Vanguard from buying up single family homes, force people to pay a minimum wage. Why is why don't we have a minimum wage that adjusts with the cost of living? Why isn't it tied to that? Like there are so many fixes for this. And instead we're just going to keep talking about, you know, how much did he pay some woman to sleep with him and from which part before we forget, thank you. Reflect the sun. You're amazing. 20 punch up pod memberships. We so appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. Amen. Um, all right. Where do we go from here? Uh, well, this is going to be good for everybody. We're going to merge two of the biggest uh, credit card company banks. Capital One is going to acquire Discover $35.3 billion deal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we already look. Everything is owned by Amazon on some level. Uh, all these companies across every industry are investing their own uh, stocks and money into the other companies. So it's like... Yeah. It's our economy and our, our corporations in the U S all are webbed together to support right. each other. Like, so if you're Amazon, you still want, <laughs> yeah. you still want housing to be unaffordable for people because you've invested right. in that. And right. so it's like, they've ganged up on us, the middle class and working poor to where we are fucked. And the more monopolies they allow, the, the more we are fucked and it's all happening in front of us and it's not an issue that's being brought up on in this election which is the number one issue i mean like i mean wasn't that supposed to be liz warren's whole thing what and she's talking about her blunt rotation uh, her blunt, blunt rotation, rotation and you know and how chips. Many chips are in a bag of chips got to um, make sure that package is filled up there are more chips um you know i have so many issues with sean fain so I don't want anybody to think that we are sort of blindly uh, lionizing him. But I will say again, I truly appreciate that he says words that most Americans don't hear from people in some level of power or visibility and destitute people trying to cross the border to find a better life are not our enemy. They are not taking your jobs. When I see these people, I see my grandparents. Our job as leaders is to eradicate poverty everywhere. That is our challenge. I just appreciate that we have somebody out there saying those words, even though he just, you know, endorsed Biden, even though I, like I, I understand like the stand up strike was not the way I would have done the strike, but he is giving voice to to a philosophy that might save us. So more people need to be saying those words and then acting on them is my hope. I agree. I mean, it, it's kind of like the Bernie thing. Like, yeah. You know, Bernie, for all the things he's done, at the end of the day, tells you to vote for Biden, which fucking is terrible and not calling out the genocide. But, you know, you can't say that these people are necessarily sheepdog i mean you're sheepdogs when it comes time to voting i get it but like yeah. you're not the party didn't put you out there the party isn't paying these people to go out there and, and be the biggest antagonist to them so wherever i have disagreements with some of these yeah. people i don't think they're owned by the party 
And I yeah. don't think I don't either one, unless and this is like the 4D chess or like the whatever the thing, like unless they are getting paid to say those things so that then when they say and so you got to vote for Biden. Yeah. I don't know. But I mean, but, I but don't like think it, that, but I don't know. But like in Bernie's case, I mean, he he woke so many people up to to all that's of what's true. going on. Like, there's no yeah. way. I mean, no, you could true. you could make a case now that he's owned by them, but right. like back when he pushed against the party so vehemently, right? There's no way they're like, oh, go out there and yeah. And no, I agree with you. Things. I agree with you. I don't think they're getting paid to say those things. I think they're being allowed to as long as in the end they bring people back to the fold. But I don't know. Who the hell knows? Just yeah. the more listen, the more Just people hear that, the more we have strikes. All these, you know, young people who are doing strikes, a lot of them were yeah. awakened by Bernie. So when, you know, what is it, 21 um Starbucks, 41, I'm gonna get the 21 Starbucks stores uh filing union pe petitions. That was yesterday, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, that's not good for Howard Schultz. He does not enjoy that. So We'll take our, and our we're not money. we're not diving into this today, but uh, I did want to point out it kind of crosses the economy because a lot of the a lot of the protests you're going to see coming forward are going to be economy based because so many people are just fucked in the middle class and they're working poor. So that's why Cop City, that's a big part of why they're building all these cop cities everywhere. And, you know, a lot of the left seems to think, you know, Atlanta is the, I mean, Atlanta is the main focus, but it's happening everywhere. It's all over. It's, yeah. They have got the most attention there. And because of that, we need to stop Cop City. It's a, right. it's a symbolic win, but we need to also stop these other 26 or 69 Cop Cities. Uh, the only states without plans for this type of project are North Dakota, Vermont, and Wyoming. Three. Three states don't have that and they'll be next. So that is terrifying. Because if you really think that uh, Biden is the key to preserving democracy and Trump is a fascism, and we know Trump is probably going to win, but even if he doesn't, we know that Democrats aren't going to win forever. So if your plan is not that you're going to be able to win forever, but you're going to keep helping cops grow and build right. cop cities, what you are doing is helping fortify the exact people who are going to be enabling the growth of fascism and crushing any protests. And this is why nobody should think electoral politics is going to solve fuck all. You should yeah. just go into electoral politics thinking I may vote for this person or that person. Doesn't matter. Not it's not going to change shit. Like so yeah. I'm not even mad at somebody who votes for Biden. It does I'm not going None to of it, but, no, but whatever. I, yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. Um but they've convinced the public that Silence on these issues is hugely important now, even when this, the public disagrees, because the other guy is so bad, we can't even talk about these bad problems. We can't even talk about it. We can't put it yeah. anywhere near a Democrat. We can't we can't blame Biden for COVID because Trump would be worse. But also, right. even if he wouldn't be, you're going to get elect Trump. Uh, well, I'm against the war in, in uh, Israel and Palestine. I'm against I'm against no, Trump would be worse. Well, what, Trump would be worse. I don't even or, know what they mean with that. <laughs> or what? I don't even care about that. What about us here? Right. I don't right. want fascism here. So just shut up about right. that. And now is not the time. We hear now is not the time. Every, every election year. cycle. Every two Every years. year, literally. But, yeah, truly. Uh, yeah. It's, he's only been here for, he, give him a chance. He just got here. Not now. It's the midterms. Yeah, not now. His term. In his second term, he could be himself. Yeah. Oh, my God. Who is the guy that works across the aisle because yeah. of his relationships? And like, who wants a strong Republican Party? I do not want a strong Republican Party. Who we're all supposed to vote for to uh, to stop Trump, of course, but like because he's our only chance to save abortion. He's the one who lost abortion rights. Yep. So he's the only option the Democrats could put forward to because he's so good at protecting our rights and working across the aisle that he's the only one who could stop us losing abortion rights that we lost under him. And that he still has no plans to protect or codify or do anything. He He's won't expand the court. Talking about it. Not they yet. know the only way you have any chance of preserving abortion rights is to expand the court. Yep. 
period, and, and the filibuster. You got to do those two things, period. There's no other way. That's it. He won't do either. Okay. I have heard, and I need to do more research on this, that if they published the Equal Rights Amendment, that that would go a Could long way to finding them. Yeah. I don't know, but what? do something. Like, just throw it all at the wall. Fucking do something. Yeah. It's Biden like mumbles and falls off a stage. Like, he, come he's on. He's the walking meme of we tried nothing and nothing has worked. <laughs> you know. And we're all out of ideas. We're all out of ideas, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, that's a perfect transition um, to, oh, I know we need to do our, uh, we need to do our little interstitial, our party time, right? Oh, but we had, or, there's a win. We had a win on the economy. I don't want to talk about anything good. No, go ahead. Talk. Well, good? okay. First off. I'm joking. Yeah, bring there's me. bad stuff because they're all ganging up to uh, declare the NR, NR, NLRB and NLRA unconstitutional. And so- you know, folks that think Trader Joe's is this happy, touchy, feely, good for employees place. They're all on the same team. They have all, all that them. lingo that makes them like captain, manager. We're all in the right. Place. And so, especially Trader Joe's, because they're branded as this feel good place, they need to feel some pain by this action. So, yeah. do not shop at Trader Joe's and tell yeah. all your lib friends that think they're they're recycling and their Trader Joe's bags is saving the world that Trader Joe's is a piece of shit right now. Yeah. So, get, get the word. That. But uh, as far as the positive thing, there is a win in the courts of all yeah, places. That, I'm shocked actually by this, but yeah, Supreme Court refused to take up a challenge to New York's rent control system, turning down two appeals from landlord coalitions. They wanted to uh, declare rent control unconstitutional. Their case was shot down. I don't understand why it was shot down and why they didn't take this case because this is such a corporate owned corporate leaning Supreme Court for, you know, what, two decades now, three decades. I'm just shocked that they decided not to take this up. I would have thought that, you know, it went against your, you know, corporations right. or people and, but whatever, good. Again, Same, but maybe, <laughs> maybe they, they had enough education on this issue to realize what's this country going to live, look like without rent control, because since all the court, since you got three major groups owning all of housing in, in this whole yeah. country now, uh, without some rent control, you're going to have billions of homeless people. How do you think you get slave labor if you don't make people homeless and then criminalize the homeless? Who's going to make all those calls for Mike Bloomberg? And right. uh, what what did we find out that they were making soda cans? Yeah. yeah. All the big corporations that use slave labor um, and our firefighters that Kamala went released from jail. OK, did I did I bring did I bring us down after you were showing us good news? Uh, why don't no, we that was, we're going to I, I wasn't listening anyway, like always. <laughs> I know what, yeah, some points. Make your point. What's your point? <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But yeah, Saul, actually, that's hilarious. That's exactly right. I thought we were a family with pizza parties. Every time things go well, we're going to give it, when we take our million dollar bonuses, we're going to give the uh, the plebes over here some ramen and a pizza party. I mean, maybe a taco. That's a new taco thing. Or two. Hire a taco yeah. person to come in. You can make your own tacos. That's the new pizza party. We're family. You're fired. All right.